We're looking today at um, storing uh, information to disk, um, not in a way that is sort of um, readable by hand. So we've previously looked at storing um, text in like a text file. Um, but if we've got sort of collections of objects and we want to store those to disk, rather than trying to you know take every property off an object and convert it to some kind of format that we can put separated by commas, um, sometimes we just want to store stuff to disk and be able to reload it in later. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, fortunately, this is made um, easy for us by something called serializable. OK, now serializable is what's known as an interface uh, in Java. Um, but unlike most normal interfaces, we don't actually have to implement any additional methods to get it work, to get it to work. Um, so if we take, for example, this code I've got here, I've got an employee class. Okay, an employee has got a, a name, it's got a start date, it's, very, it's kind of simplified, but um, it does the job. And we can also, you know, print, when we print it out, when we call it a string, it will give us the name of the employee and tell us when they started. Okay, and in my main method, I've got a list of employees, I put two employees into that list, and then just to show that it's working, we, we run them. So if I was to run this at the moment, you can see we've got the two employees printed out. Now. If I wanted to store this, for example, this list of employees or even just one employee um, to disk, um, I need to make sure that the thing I'm storing to disk implements serializable. Now, array list itself does as long as the thing that's stored in the array list uh, also implements serializable. But if we look at my employee at the moment, it doesn't, um, it doesn't implement any interfaces. So the way we can fix that is simply just to write implement serializable. Okay, um, we don't have to implement any methods. Okay, so the only thing that's changed is that we've got an import statement here um, and we've added this implement serializable. Okay, the idea of implementing an interface that doesn't have any methods is actually a, something known as the marker interface design pattern. Okay, so you'll probably look at design patterns in later years, um, but um, what we're doing here is implementing a, a, an interface that doesn't have any methods that we must um, actually implement. So we've done that side of things. We still need, need to be able to write the um, write it to disk. Okay, um, and this is not too different from writing a text file to disk, except we don't. Um, have quite the, the level of complexity of sort of trying to separate the date for the person and, the, and their name. We can just simply write the list of employees to disk. Okay, so rather than sort of shove it all in here, I'm just gonna write a method to do that. So I'll say um, uh, public static void, because we don't need it to return anything. Um, we'll call it save employees. Okay, and we need to pass it an array list of employee okay we obviously could have written we could have just tried to save employees here it doesn't really matter i've got to give it a name i use the same name employees okay and what we need to do is we need to create a file output stream okay so we can call this file output stream um, that's a new file output stream and we have to provide uh, to it the location where we want to store our uh, save data. So I'm going to call it um, save.dat. Doesn't really matter, but you don't want to use a tech, uh, an extension for a, a, a file type that's known because you're not going to be able to easily make use of the content that's stored in this file. It's, it's stored in a particular way that allows Java to read it uh, in and out. Okay, you'll also notice that we've got um, a red underlined here and it tells us that we're not handling an ex we're not handling an exception, potentially a file not found exception. Okay, so um, there could be problems when we come to write our file. So what we need to do is to put this in a try catch block. So here's our try and we need to catch the file not found exception and we'll call that E and we'll put a message to the user uh, unable to save file um, and then we'll add on the message from that exception which might give us some more detail if this fails okay um, so that creates the file output stream um, but in order to sort of connect up what we're saving which is an object we also need something called an object 
output stream. Okay, so we'll create an object output stream. That's going to be a new object output stream. And we pass the file output stream into the object output stream. Okay, you can probably see where this is going. Connect the file output stream to the object output stream and then try and um, write the object um, using the object output stream, which will in turn write it to file. So our file output stream is there. Okay, um, we're getting another warning here. It's saying that we could have an input output exception. Okay, so we also need to catch that. Now we could make this a generic exception, but it's probably better to handle them separately. So what we'll do, we'll say also, we're gonna catch an IO exception. I'll call that E as well, because it's in the separate block, so it's only, only valid inside here. Um, unable to uh, convert what are we doing? We're creating object output stream. Create object output stream. And then again, for our own benefit, we could add the message if that goes wrong. So now we've got our object output stream. All we need to do is to get our object output stream to write some kind of object. And you can see it actually can take, you know, uh, primitive values as well. Um, but we're in this case, we're going to write an object. And in this case, our object is actually a list of objects, but that's fine because that's still an object. And we're going to write our employees to disk. Okay. So all I should need to do here is to call save employees and pass in my employees. And then we can see this code run. So let's see that we should just see the same output we had before. But what should also happen, if you just noticed, is this save.dat file has appeared. OK, if we double click it, you'll see that it is not uh, able to read it. You can just about see that you can see, oh, look, there's a type java.util.arraylist. Um, you can see, look, there's start date. You can see something referring to a string there. Maybe that's the name is a string and the start date is a local date. Um, you can even just about see, look at that the, it's storing an employee and the, there's some data relating to the names of the um, employee but it's not intended to be human readable okay uh, one other thing just to mention is that um, this only works because local date and string already also both implement serializable you can see if we hover over string it says implement serializable and if we hover over local date um, if we scroll across uh, it implements serializable OK, so if you nest objects with inside objects, if we had some kind of other object um, that belonged to our employee, let's say we we created some kind of other company vehicle and employees could have a company vehicle, the company vehicle would have to implement serializable for this to work. Uh, if it doesn't, it will probably not even allow us to compile it, but we can check. Oh no, it's not going to complain there. So let's just see what happens if we try to write it to this again. It should error. Yes, so you can see, we can see it says unable to create object output stream uk.ac.chester.employee. So if we get that, we know it's not been serialized. So we're getting this one here, telling us the name of the class. So we can just simply fix that by saying implements serializable and we'll be back to our working program.